Hey guys, I'm Rick, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this custom filing cabinet, so stay tuned. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you saw a couple weeks ago I picked up some recycled plywood from the fire department that I work for. I got various thicknesses and various dimensions. Here I'm just ripping down the three quarter inch plywood just so I have more manageable pieces to push through my table saw. I'm just ripping down the dimensions for all three sides. I decided to use pocket holes on the inside of the cabinet as they're super strong, they're easy to use, and inside of a filing cabinet, you're never going to see them. Here I grab a square just to help keep the sides at 90 degrees while I screw in each pocket hole. Measure the opening and I cut myself two corresponding stretchers, one for the top, one for the bottom and attach these the same way with pocket holes. Here I'm making the uh, two drawers, cutting them down to length. I used half inch plywood. I moved my table saw blade down to a quarter of an inch. This was the depth of the dado that I was going to cut to receive the rabbit. I moved the fence over to a half inch, started my first cut, then I moved my fence over one eighth of an inch which is just the width of my blade and make my second pass to complete the dado. The next step was then to move the fence back over to a quarter of an inch and this is where I'm cutting my rabbit. Then I put a thin layer of glue in each dado. Orient my rabbit in the right direction and start assembling each drawer. Then I applied a clamp on each side. This was mainly just to assist the joint while the glue dried. The joint was plenty strong enough without it. I added a quarter inch piece of plywood to the bottom as an afterthought. I didn't want to lose anything if I missed a folder when I was filing something. Next I just took a scrap piece of stock with a nice flat edge, threw my torpedo on it, leveled it up and got ready to mount my drawer slide. Here I'm marking one inch back. My drawer slides are 22 inches long and the cabinet's 24 inches deep. So that gives me a one inch gap in the front and the back. I extend the slide out and start putting in the four screws that are mounting it to the side of the cabinet. I'll put a link in the description below on these slides. They're soft close slides and they work awesome. I use a three quarter inch piece of plywood at the bottom just to hold my drawer level while I put in the four screws that go from the slide to the drawer. I start with the front and then slowly work my way out. Something very satisfying about a soft closed drawer. I just go ahead and double check, take three measurements of the top just to make sure that the box stayed square during assembly. Next I move over to the chop saw 
and cut out the five pieces to length. Just finishing up the cuts for the top and the drawer fronts before glue up. Once I had all the boards oriented to the direction that I would like for the top, I just did a simple glue up. I decided for this top just to do a round over, just to soften the edges. Measuring the length I need for these Rockler folder slides. These work perfect with the half inch plywood sides. I'll leave a link in the description below. I took my Craig face clamp and some playing cards just to get the spacing right for the drawer fronts and just attach with four simple screws through the back. I'm removing some of the painter's tape here before I put the X pattern on the front. I went ahead and brad nailed through the painter's tape and then did wood filler. So when I pull the blue tape away, all I have is just a tiny amount where the brad nail was that I have to sand. I'm sure there's a better way out there to put these X's on the front of these drawers, but I just took my time. And in the end, they turned out to look really nice. Since the angles all came out different, I just moved my miter saw around and held the piece really tight and carefully cut to my line. I always recommend when you're using soft woods to condition the wood with the Minwax wood conditioner and this just helps allow the stain to soak into the soft wood more uniformly. The staining was a bit of a trial and error. I went over it with this Midwax Classic Grade 271. I started out staining everything in the Midwax Espresso stain and then I went over it with this Midwax Classic 271 just to try and soften the deep brown. It took me five attempts to get the color exactly how I wanted it. Hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you on the next one.